what do you want to do first? I've got a bunch of stuff. Well, I think I we have. That, I think I first. On England, remember that whole thing? Oh uh, God, you did have money. Did you not hedge? No. Yeah, I bet England to win the Euro, and they lost. They lost the final two to one to Spain. But yeah, know, I know. I I watched. I had Spain. You watched the Euro final? Yeah. Wow. Because oh, Brett and I had money on Spain. Oh yeah, well Spain was the right pick, right? I I thought they were too young going into the tournament. So why didn't you hedge? I just, I mean, I I made a little bit of money back, but it wasn't even close to what I, I mean. Like you were joking that you were going to retire, but now we're not no. retiring. No, I can't retire. Have you seen what happened to the stock market today? Jesus Christ, man. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, uh, I did not. I, oh, You know, uh, the stock market stuff is just like in a step. I don't even have the app on my phone anymore because I was getting, I, I just want it. I, I don't want to look. It's like, please, when I wake up at 75 and I'm finally able to retire, we have no social security. This is going to be my retirement. Like, I don't, I don't know what else to do. Like, I'm buying houses. I got a little bit of crypto. I got a 401k. I got a money market account. Like I'm just trying to diversify. I won't tell you what else I've got. I was explaining to my trainer earlier and he was like, that's crazy. And I said, liquidity. If shit hits the fan, I got lots of uh, things that can be bartered. And he just goes, what the fuck? So I want to talk about this before we get into the serious topics. You speaking of you making money, you had, you had a bet with uh, a guy that I work with. You made. You want to tell everybody about this? Are, yeah. Are you it, uh, you so when I was up for Super Bowl, Chase Michelson, who actually I think is going to be doing a show with me on Wager Talk during football season. Chase Michelson. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. We'll see who else. I think um, Arthur De Caesar might join us. Maybe Andrew Babakitis. We're we're kind of working out some of the final details, but let's just say we're going to get more of a look behind the counter, and you guys aren't going to be stuck with John Murray. But Chase is sitting across from me. Uh, I don't know if this was before or after the Jameson shot you decided to buy. But anyway, there was um, some... Not my best decision, but go ahead. Go ahead. I think I actually I think I think actually gave it to Shalinda and was like, please don't make me do this. And then somehow I ended up with one anyway. And then Andy was not doing very well after that. I digress. Chase was sitting across from me. You had introduced me. I'm like, who's this kid? Literally. Nice He's kid. And he says something to me and I'm like what? And he said something along the tune of like politics. And I was like, don't talk politics with me because I'm going to destroy you with facts and data. And I said, and also Biden is not going to make it until November. There's just no way. And he goes, well, how do you know? And I said, listen, if you actively look at the progression of this presidency, da, 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 we come across a $500 bet that I said he won't make it to November. And that was very vague in his mind. And I meant, a lot of things by that vagueness. He's not going to be the nominee. He's not going to be the president. He's not going to be possibly here. All of those things were involved in the bet. So over the last, and it gave me a lot of entertainment. I mean, it was only a nickel bet for me, uh, but it was fun. A lot of money to a, a working man. A, a 23 man like year old kid. kid. Yeah. That's a lot of money for us. Yeah. For us. Who just got engaged and bought a house. Yeah. I'm sure she was, his, his new fiance was probably not very happy about that, but I'm going to get probably him a nice wedding gift. It's going to be fine. Anyway, so I got to cash that, uh, and I was out at a bar. Was I at a bar or a restaurant with you Ariel? Were in the time? Italy. You well, were I know, in Italy. but I was trying to think of where I was. Anyway, I decided that Ariel and I should get a nicer bottle of wine. In conclusion, so you, so you don't feel bad. You were on vacation in Italy, and you had a kid, just a, a young kid that works around us with us, send you money. And this yeah. is not, you don't I said, here's, I just politely said, here's my Venmo. Uh, thank you. Come again. <laughs> I don't, I didn't like it. And I, and I expressed my, my displeasure about it to you. I said I was going to buy him a nice wedding gift. It's not going to be worth $500, but maybe I'll, maybe you I'll, uh, say, I'll, I'll, I asked for the registry. I said, listen, you guys just got engaged. Send me the registry. I'll be nice and uh, send a parting gift. You uh, but you John. I know yeah. we're getting way too far into the show. We already started the show before the producers even hit record, I feel like. We uh, but we have to address the elephant in the room. Yeah, we do. Okay, Friday, July 19th, I was in Italy, but mm -hmm. the Superbook closed in eight of the nine states. So every state but Nevada. So I'd like you to elaborate just a little bit on that because I feel like we, we haven't heard very much. And uh, obviously it was very difficult for everybody and people lost their jobs and I was not very happy to hear it. We'll leave it at that. Well, I wasn't either. Uh, it was a very, very difficult 
difficult day, difficult week for all of us. Still difficult even now. We made a decision, like you said, to close the Superbook in the other eight states we were operating in. All the states outside of Nevada were still business as usual here at the Westgate in Las Vegas. But it was a business decision. It's a hyper competitive marketplace, very competitive outside of Nevada. A lot of these companies spending a lot of money on customer acquisition. We felt it no longer made sense for us to try to compete with these bigger companies that are spending so much money. And we decided to focus our efforts in Nevada, try to build the Superbook brand here in Nevada back up to make it the best sports book in Nevada. Okay, so hypothetically, I have a ticket that has yet to cash in one of those eight states. Right. What do I need yeah, to do? A lot of tickets like that. There's, there's World Series tickets, Super Bowl tickets, obviously. Um, we're working, every state's rules are a little bit different. We have a team that's working full time with the regulators in each of those eight states that I mentioned to figure out exactly how we're going to handle that. So we appreciate everybody being so patient. If you do have a specific question, please contact support at superbook.com. But we are working on some some messaging to send out to everybody. We're going to get that out as soon as we can. We're going to get everything resolved as soon as we possibly can. But if you got a question specific to your account, I'd recommend support at superbook.com. Send them your message. They'll get back to you. Okay. All right. Now let's stay on the Superbook topic while we're here. And I thought you were going to tell us about your trip to Italy with Ariel Epstein. Who wants to hear about that? They saw it all go down on Instagram and Twitter. Listen, very Let good talk. time. Highly recommend the under bottle of wine, under number of bottles of wine cash. We only average about three or four bottles per day. We were there for 10 days. I set the line at 41 and a half. I think the final number, and I would need to check credit card statements. I think the final number was actually 38. I got I got a question about your trip to Italy. Why did you FaceTime me so many times? We FaceTimed everybody. If you got a FaceTime from me and Ariel, it means you were very loved. Uh, we FaceTimed <laughs> her mom. We FaceTimed her grandma. We FaceTimed my dad. Uh, tried to FaceTime my mom. She ignored me like you did. Uh, we FaceTimed no. Brett. We FaceTimed uh, Chris Thurston's mom, Val, even. She did not answer either. And then Chris was like, what about me? And then we just kind of forgot to FaceTime Chris. Well, you it was like 5 or 5.30 in the morning in las vegas so i'm so it was like noon in italy or something yeah. i don't know we were having a good time that's okay but do you want to tell them the story about the time you facetimed me right after you got off the boat and you were complaining well that, that was really bad and i would stand up right now and show you guys how bad my leg looks uh but the i don't get embarrassed i'm gonna start by saying this this is one of the top five most embarrassing moments of my life and i don't get embarrassed but my I think the reason why I wasn't as hurt in the moment was because I was so mortified. So we went to a beach club. So obviously we were drinking. And I think the thing about Italy is, of course, you can drink hard booze, but we just didn't. Like we drank Aperol spritzes and champagne and wine the whole time. So I was drinking, obviously. Is it a, re is it a requirement when you go to Italy? Because I was there in May. Is it a requirement that you have to pretend that Aperol spritzes are good? They're awful. They're yeah, fucking no. awful. They no. are garbage. They are garbage no. in the United States and they are garbage there. But you know what's really good? I agree. Limoncello spritzes. Limoncello spritzes are really good. So it's I limoncello, know. champagne, soda water. Those are bomb. Good. So anyway, I just okay. said Aperol because everybody knows what that is, but limoncello spritzes. I tried to drink an Aperol spritz and I was like, why nice. do we ever pretend these are good? Nobody, nobody thinks they're good. They taste awful. Agreed. So basically, uh, Ariel and I had been drinking limoncello spritzes. We were hanging out, good time. With the um, beach club package we had, we had a bottle of champagne that came with. Well, we had made friends with the couple next to us, so we were just like having cocktails. That's not what I heard. I heard that you were, I no, heard no, no. You were beefing with the people next to you. Ariel, I went to the bathroom and Ariel upset the ladies to the other side of us. That's a whole another story that I'm not gonna tell. Uh, right. But the couple next to us was from Boston. They were awesome. So we were just like kind of drinking with them. And it was like, all right, it's 3.30. We've got dinner in a few hours. What do we want? Or well, technically we have a aperitivo in a few hours, then dinner, which is like first dinner, second dinner, I basically decided, even though it's like happy hour with food. Anyway, yeah. uh, we decide, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to pour out four glasses of champagne, which really there's five to a bottle. So it's a little bit more than one glass. We slam it. 
and I go to get on the dock to get on the boat back and there's big waves crashing, you know, getting everybody all wet. I'm talking to the couple still, Ariel's on the boat. The guy, I hear the guy go, give me your hand. So I give him my hand. And next thing I know, I'm on the floor of the boat. But I hopped up really quick. I was like, I'm okay, I'm okay. And the boat captain's like, no, you're not. Sit down. And I'm like, nope, totally fine, totally fine. And then it's like a 20-minute boat ride back. Getting off the boat was fun. There is about 480 steps from where the boat dock is up to our hotel. So we made it up about 20 of those. And then we stopped for a drink. Then we made it up about 20 more and then we stopped for a drink and then we made it up to a taxi that I don't know how many euros I paid him to take us to our hotel. By the time I got to our hotel, my knee was the size of a grapefruit. The next morning, the bruise on the side of my leg was really bad. Then the, the bruise on my hip came through. Now my kneecap is very green a week later. Uh, needless to say, I was not that drunk, but I have been on a boat a million times and my dad's text me was, First time on a boat, and I'm like, no, but I wasn't paying attention. Is it, is it that embarrassing to be drinking all day and slip on a boat? That seems like kind of normal. I don't okay, know. but think about this. I slipped like on the edge of the boat, and it's like one of those wooden Italian boats. So it's got a deep, like, well. So, like, I fell probably like three feet. I'm very lucky I didn't fall on my face. How many people saw it? By 20 or 30. Oh, that is a lot. Yeah, that's and then there was this girl who was like maybe 25 that was treating me like I was a grandma, like trying to help me. And I'm like, please just stop. This is already so bad. I feel so <laughs> stupid. I'm so in so much pain. But I feel even worse that you think I'm some drunk old lady that needs help getting off this boat. You got you got a long way to go before your drunk old lady phase. But you did you did FaceTime me and you were you were trying to tell me how. The food in Italy was not up to the quality of the food in Florida. Okay, first of all, now you just dox where the fuck I live. Oh, oh shit. I'm sorry. No, 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 John. I don't really sorry. care. Everybody knows where no, I live no, now. No, 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 no. No, no. Get that out. That, you're it's right. fine. John Murray. Okay. So oh, anyway, I'm saying, no, yeah, all I'm, I'm saying is we have a large population of Italians in several areas of the United States. Okay? Including yeah, Las yeah. Vegas. Yeah. New York City. Amazing Italian food. Several parts of uh, Florida, I've been to really great Italian restaurants. Las Vegas, great Italian. The food in Italy is amazing. I don't yeah. want to take away from that. I'm just saying, I feel like I don't need to fly to Italy to get great Italian food. Well, you don't need to fly to Italy to get great Italian food. I agree with that. There's, there's, there's great Italian food all over the world. Italian yeah. food is like the best food. But it really the food, is. The food there is very, very good. A lot, it seemed like a lot of the UFC people were in Italy. The week, the time you were there, like Dana White was there. Yeah, he was a on a people. mega yacht. I didn't see him, though. Because they were getting ready for UFC 304, which was in Manchester, England, last Saturday. Patty the Batty. My guy, Patty Pimbletty beat. So Bobby Green changed his name to King Green. That guy's like 50 years old. Like I, I understand the change your name thing. That was like cool <laughs> in like the mid-2000s when Chad Ochocinco did it. But like... Awesome. Now it's like, okay, you, you can't do that. Like, it's already been done. That was a – did well in that fight. Patty the Batty beats King Green. I'm, I'm, you would have been so proud of me. So wow. I, I, I say, all right, I missed the plus money. He's now minus 110. Mm -hmm. Can't bet him. Too late. Thanks. Thank you for you, teaching you me to be disappointed. No, of course not. I missed, the, I missed the plus money. I was in Italy. And then I looked and I was like, minus 110. I, I can't bet this now. Kind of like the, you know, the, it, the it, chick boxing match. I missed the plus money. And, I, yeah. and then it was like minus chick 190. And I couldn't bet it either. It. And guess what? It won in like 54 seconds. 45. I don't call that a chick boxing match. Um, so you took Chase's money. Yes. You blew it on a champagne bottle that you chugged. And, you didn't and then even my karma was falling inside the boat. And no one and didn't then you fell. It. And then you didn't even bet on Patty the Batty. Are you kidding? That, uh, that actually, like, I'm a little... I'm a little annoyed with you. Uh, you. So Tom Aspinall wins the co-main event. He beats Curtis Blades. We have this up. We have Tom Aspinall minus 135 against John Jones for a potential okay. UFC heavyweight title fight. Bilal Muhammad won the main event. He beat Leon Edwards. We have him plus 220 against Shavkat Rachmanov in a potential welterweight title fight. Shavkat Rachmanov minus 260. I, 
I've been following I'm so the UFC. I'm so glad I don't have to read these UFC names. Well, it's been, like the worst I, when I, I have to got, do it on Wager Talk. I'm like, why? I might have got all those wrong. I, I'm sure I, I think I got John Jones right. But I, I might have got the other. So I, I've been following the UFC since King Green. Did you get King Green right? I got King Green. Good. So 2010, my buddy Lewis took us to our first UFC fight. My first in person. It was the night that Brock Lesnar beat Shane Carwin for the undisputed heavyweight title. It was awesome. That wasn't a long time ago. It was awesome. We had an awesome time. And I've been a big UFC fan ever since that night in July of 2010. And I'm telling you. I was going to say, was that 2009? No, 2010. 2010. And I'm telling you right now, this is the worst collection of UFC champions that I've seen in my 14 years. Like when I first started following the UFC, it was like, Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, Brock Lesnar, and then a light heavyweight named John Jones came along and became the light heavyweight champion. It was all. Do people cheating. still hate him? I haven't been keeping up with that. I don't hate John Jones. Yeah, but like he cheated, and so people. I don't hate John Jones. I like John Jones. Uh, okay. but I, I just feel like they don't have a lot of marketable stars right now. Sean O'Malley is probably the guy they're trying yeah. to build up. He is going to fight in Las Vegas next month. At the sphere, but we did we did pretty well in that event. Patty the Batty was our was our bell cow. He's a scouser. He's a big Liverpool fan. How could you not? What whatever that means. It means he's probably a fan of Liverpool soccer. Football. Oh, okay. What do you want to do? What do you want to do next? You, you, you didn't really tell us much about Italy. Well, we're supposed to be. Why don't you go through all the stuff you're supposed to promote? Because you're sort of the face of the brand now. I'm the face of the brand. Yeah, you're the oh, face of the well, brand, aren't you? We've got to talk about we've got to talk about contest. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. So let's start with the super contest, right? Yeah. It's been open for a month it's now. A, July first. Super contest weekend. I'm going to be there August 15th through 18th. Mm-hmm. You guys have the super contest gold, five grand, winner take all. I think it was like half a million dollars last year that got paid out. I'm still on the fence if I'm going to enter that one or not because do you have do you have notes? Because it feels like you're kind of you're you're kind of stumbling through this. You yeah, don't no, notes. I don't have notes. Why not? I I always this is, every, you I, you are the notes guy. You're supposed to send the rundown. You did not send me a rundown at all. John, uh, John, okay, but John, let's go John. really quick because I screwed this up. Uh, my fade you guys text me, Cal. We're all set for Super Goddess Week in golf at the country club, right? And I said, well, no, I gave you guys the phone number and the email. And they said, well, in years past, you did it. And I said, well, I didn't do it this year. So can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I can. On who you need to contact if you want to play golf. And I am going to play golf, but I just didn't set it up for anybody else. I do have a team, right? You told me I have a team. I got you a team. You have your own team. I don't know how you're, I don't know how you're- Are you on my team? No, I'm, I'm going to play with, like, Andy and Ronnie and Lillian, I guess. So uh, Super Contest Weekend Golf Tournament is at the Las Vegas Country Club Saturday, August 17th. Shotgun start at noon. If you still want to get in and you're not in already, call this number, 1-888-457-3307. Right now, the graphics guy should put that here. Right 1-888-457-3307. Here. Try to do that during business hours, normal Monday through Friday business hours. Ask for the tremendous Rosemary Rocco, and she will set you up. So we got we actually we got the shirts in yesterday. We got oh, the Super good. Contest Golf shirts. Did, did in. you get any? Did you get any not men's double XLs? No, we got we got smalls for the ladies, okay. Okay. and maybe a smaller <laughs> gentleman. The Super Thank Contest. You. you can sign up. <laughs> Until Saturday, September 7th at 3 p.m. And Kelly mentioned Super Contest Gold, $5,000, winner take all. Winner usually gets a little less than half a million. I think that's the best contest, right? I, mean, I do too. Like if you're a serious player, because the, the, the contest, some of these contests have too many people. I mean, even ours probably, it's, it's just, it's so hard to win a contest with that many people. Super Contest Gold, I think that's where it's at. And then they've got, we got to do this too. If you're in Vegas that weekend or any other weekend, we have a new Elvis Presley tribute show at the Westgate. Oh, that's Tuesday, what we should do with the producers. Wednesday, Thursday. And we you should know what? treat I, them to Elvis. We had a we had the, the Westgate 55th anniversary party last night here on property. And How was they, it? Actually, it was pretty fun. 
Okay. And they invited back a lot of old team members from the past, and a lot of them showed up. It was it was good to see so many people, and they had the Elvis impersonator get up there. This guy's good. Oh, I'm sure he's good. And you know, I didn't like I I didn't like the Elvis movie, and I didn't like the Elvis show, like the Elvis uh, show that that uh, Cirque du Soleil did. Did you ever see that one? Oh yeah, that was, yeah, it was all right. It but was okay. This Elvis guy here at the Westgate, he's really good. I'm hmm. telling you, man. Are you going to go to that show, Kelly? Are you going to go? I think we should. I said, are you going to go? Why do I? You're, you, I got to go with you? Yeah. All of you guys are going to go. We okay. just This is what you do. You just get loaded. And then I all of a sudden remember the Elvis songs that I haven't heard in forever. Um, okay. That's so so terrible. anything else left on the super contest? No. Right now until Saturday, September 7th, 3 p.m. That means mm -hmm. uh, before kickoff on Sunday. This is why I like, I'll say this. This is why I like the regular Super Contest because of the end season contest. If you guys remember a long, 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 long time ago, I won the mini contest because I'm never going to win the whole thing. I'm not going to get, I'm not going to be good enough. Well, in, not with that attitude. Not with that attitude. I, I, there's, NFL season long is so difficult. Yeah, there's going to be somebody that gets catches lightning in a bottle. It's just not going to be me. But I can totally win one of those in-season contests. Well, that's why we have 11 in-season contests. So you've got three six-week contests, six three-week contests. And it's $1,000. Two nine-week contests, right? Yes. What if the NFL goes to, like, you see Joe Burrow's recommendation where they expand it to, I think, a 20-week regular season? No, I did two not. Two buys, see that. or it's crazy. I don't know. What I saw doing. that he was on the white dudes for Kamala call, though. <laughs> You're trying to get me in trouble, and I don't appreciate you it. Don't have to admit, that's funny. I was like, oh, Joey B, got it. Don't make me, don't get me in trouble, okay? Don't get me in trouble. Uh, do you want to talk about you? Yep. Our show, Kelly and Murray, is doing a college football. We are. Okay. So, so obviously you guys have seen on social media, splash sports.com backslash Kelly in Vegas. I have the college football pick X contest, seven picks a week against the spread best bet each week. Winner take all for the segments. We're going to do um, different segmented weeks, big 10, big 12, ACC, mountain West, sec, ACC. So no little tiny schools. Um, that way it kind of gives you, a little bit of time before you have to do it. You get six I, inches. I like that's, that's kind of discriminatory. Yeah, you because know, this, this is the problem. I don't want anybody that's playing FCS, and I don't want to have to submit my picks by like Tuesday or Wednesday for matching. Like I just want all, it the, to be, all the SEC teams play some FCS team a week before the. Guess what? It's not going to be in my contest. That's okay. the beauty of being the commissioner. I get to make my own rules. Well, see, you know our our producer John Hoagland. Everyone calls him the unit. He yes. went to Ball State, so you're so you're discriminating so against the state. No Ball State, so you're you're kicking out the Mac. You're kicking out John Hogan. Uh, listen, I and the Pac-12, and the Pac-12. I don't want the Pac-12. Pac-12 doesn't doing exist it. anymore. Yeah, but there's two teams that still somewhere are have a schedule and are playing. All listen, right. it's fine. It's fine. I it just I just wanted to be very simple. I don't want there to be any issues. I don't want weighted scoring. You know, like yeah, how you have you, to like. I hate what are you going to tell them about the Kelly and Murray con? I was just getting ready to. So then We're John and I are going to also do college football because I think the space really lacks college football contests. And so we're going to do a hybrid of John's idea. And hopefully next year we can fully implement it with technology. But this year we are doing an N, uh, a season long NCAA survivor, 100 bucks, $100,000 is going to be. The prize pool you get tons of entries i think it's 33 entries uh you can have so depending on how many you really want to have you can basically have as many as you want and this is going to what include, if you want 34. okay so this is going to include the same conferences because of course i set this up big 10 big 12 acc mountain west sec aac and this is going to be weeks one through 14 so that is going to include the conference championships now there's going to be some double pick weeks, John Murray. Yeah. You're going to pick one team that just has to win every single week. It's not going to start for week zero. It starts week one. We're going to also do – so week one is going to be a double pick week right out of the gate. 
Week of September 28th is going to be a double pick week. Week of October 19th is going to be a double pick week. And then the week of Thanksgiving is going to be a double pick week. So I think it's going to be awesome because it seems very easy to just pick the winner. But you're going to want to save at least one of the teams that's going to their conference championships. Well, you're going to have a little strategy there. It's very difficult, actually. It's very, it's very difficult. It's not – survivor pools, are, they, there's a lot of luck involved, and it's very hard. I mean, yes, you could just pick Georgia, and they'd probably win. That's the – we'll talk about this offline. we got to talk about what we're doing for Survivor this season, like as contestants, me and you. But I remember I, I did a uh, Survivor pool of your friend Andy Samuelson it's from Wichita, Kansas, and – Every week, he'd be like, oh, what about the Chiefs? What about the Chefs? And I'd be like, bro, I know they're probably going to win. They're the fucking Chiefs. They have Patrick Mahomes. We can only use them once, you moron. So God, I think he's it's such a homer. I, I hope he <laughs> enters this and picks KU. Like, I don't know. I was like 13 and a half point favorites over Nevada, and they lose outright. I think, <laughs> I think like the college football – I think the NFL Survivor Contests are awesome. I think they're a lot of fun. I think a college football Survivor Contest – how it how it works, how we implement it, what will we change it next year or the year after, depending on feedback potentially. But I think it's very cool. I think it's a really cool idea. I can't wait for college football to start. My my enthusiasm for NFL is never very high. And then I was looking over our mailbag questions and I had to ask the producers how to answer the first one. I haven't looked at them yet. I mean, are you are you kidding me? All right, with the NFL, the NFL's got new rules this year. Yeah. College oh, football wait. survivor contest is going to be very cool, and um, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to college football season very much. Do you want to do the mailbag? Yeah, splashsports.com backslash Kelly in Vegas is my commissioner page if you guys want to join the contest. Again, college football pick X, seven picks against the spread, college football survivor. You're going to play against me and John Murray. I already have five entries into our Survivor. I haven't decided. Why do you call it Why do you call it Pick X? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Why do you call it Pick X? I think it's a legal thing. You know how, like, gaming – gaming, because they're, they're, they're live in 41 states and Canada right now. But I think each state – you know, you're, you've dealt with regulators over the years. There's uh, some gray areas that you have to massage. So I think that's why they call it so Pick X. If we're in Canada – all those jabronis that got just annihilated drunk here in March that you said down here, are yeah. they going to be in, are they going to be in the yeah. contest? Of course they are. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> great. They were fun guys. Uh, yeah. We I'm love Canadians. Focused. They're some of my favorite people. Very fun uh, but yes, that's all we've got in terms of contest talk. So we will move right along to <laughs> the mailbag questions. Um, uh, Bug Nut 2 on IG says, for John Murray, how do you think the new NFL kickoff and hip drop tackle rules will affect the games and lines? Why do people think that I would know that I don't know anything about the NFL? Like I didn't I had to ask the guys what the rule was. And when when our 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 kid Louie, the, the social media kid, when he said what the rule was, I thought he was joking. So you you can only onside kick now in the fourth quarter, and you've got to Correct. tell the official, and you Correct. have to be behind. Yes. This is like this is like the South Park episode where Randy becomes the Broncos coach. You remember that yeah. episode? I, so the, the whole the, the best way to execute an onside kick is when the other team has no idea it's coming. Like yeah, like the, the end of the Bowl. first first half or something. Oh, Sean Payton against the Indianapolis Colts in the Super Bowl. It went off Hank Basquette's hands. Saints recovered it. They ended up winning the Super Bowl because no one saw it coming. Of course. Obviously, if you're down by six and there's 45 seconds left, you're going to do an onside kick. What kind of a rule is that? I didn't answer. I I, I didn't answer Tugger. Okay, question. so how do you think it's going to affect the game lines? I don't. I don't know why it would. I don't know. I. I, okay, so okay when they I moved the PA, when they moved the PAT back, it definitely affected the game lines. It it did because there were less games landing. More games on three. landing one. No, no, seriously, less games landed on three because then we had more goofy numbers because there were, you know, the, the extra point was basically a given back at that time. Now it's not. 
But look, I'm the wrong guy to ask because I remember when they when they changed that rule, I said, well, no one's going to miss from there anyway. So what's the difference? And they miss all the time. That really surprised me to tell you the truth. So yeah, I, I mean. I don't, there's there's know. the data before they move the PAT and then after, but I don't I would agree with you. I don't think either of these two things are going to probably affect the betting market that much. I mean, there's going to be some more dumb penalties and more flags until guys learn how to tackle. More, remember how like college football had that more like, dumb penalties and more flags. Well, remember how college football had that like uh like I would call it like a learning curve before targeting. Remember, there's a ton of targeting that first yeah. year, and everybody's like mother of God, make it stop. Well, now those kids in, that learned in high school how to tackle differently, we just don't see it as much. So I kind of am just wondering if it's going to be maybe like early on, it's going to affect things more and then it's not. I don't know. Anyway, Super. next question Super. at Sosa underscore Texas on IG says any betting on the Olympics. Not really. I mean, the, the Olympics is just, it, it's more of a watching sport than it is a betting sport. I mean, we did have some, we're getting a little bit of money on men's basketball. We're getting some money on men's and women's soccer. But women's basketball is tough. You know, the United States is minus 5,000 to win a gold medal. I mean, they could just, they just, there's no competition. When, when a sport doesn't have any competition, you're not really going to see a lot of action on it. Well, it also makes it unwatchable. You want, I mean, like you want suspense, you want excitement. I mean, like when, the, you, like when the men almost lost to like Sudan or whoever. Yeah, but that wasn't a real game. That was that just was, fuck around hour. That, well, that was that was not one of the Olympic games. That was a warm up game. Oh, but it was like, but it was lined, wasn't? Weren't they like oh, yeah, no, it was lined, but but it wasn't a real game. Yeah, no, you're right. It was lined. It was lined. So I want to ask you this because we, we've talked a lot about your basketball abilities over the years. Have you ever heard, and maybe the listeners, maybe this is like a thing that for young people. I was watching the, the three-on-three girls game in my office yesterday or the day before, and they kept calling it 3x3. Three. three. The and announcer never, was? Yeah, they kept calling it that. And I was like, you know, Who when, is I was living in, when I lived in Morgantown, we played pickup basketball, and we always called it, Three on three, or four on four, or fours or threes. I never ever heard anyone say, "Hey, you guys want to play four what, X four? What's your deal with X today on the show? You just don't like X anymore? Like you? I've never heard of it. Is that what? Is that? No, what I've young, never heard it before either. Is that what young people are calling it now? No, three I'm guessing that the announcer has no idea. All right, the Seahawks has lost. The United States men's and women's teams are both winless in three X three. Okay, it's crazy. At Seahawks two zero six one one on X says, how many entries are in the super contest currently? Good question. One hundred and seventy five in the main contest, eighteen in the gold. We always get. There's always a rush. Super contest weekend, and then college football starts the next weekend, and then Labor Day weekend, and then a lot. A lot of locals are like me. I I sign up at the end to see. Yeah, no offense. Show. I don't really want to give you a thousand dollars in June. That's fine. But like, I, I usually sign up for myself at the very end. I want to see if a certain contest has an overlay. You know, I, I sign up maybe Tuesday or Wednesday before the Thursday game because I want to see what's out there. That's fair. All right. Uh, at five, Kevin Boz. I saw this one. Since Kelly's loaded, is she going to treat Jam to some US UFC sphere tickets? No. Why not? That's, what are you talking about? That's only, a lot of money for one ticket. It's like four only three grand. grand. It's only three grand. Only three grand for nosebleeds. For you, so anyway, three grand for you is next, nothing. Next question. At College Picks 4 on X says, is there going to be a show that discusses futures on teams to make the college football playoff, win totals, championships, et cetera? Yes, there is. I, I think we do that. I think we do that when we're in person together. Because I want to, I want, I, I've been looking through everything. I'd like to let those plays marinate a little bit more. You know, we're doing a show together on August. 15th, 15th. Is that right? in person. Are we going to do a show in, in next week? I don't know. Do you want to do a show next week? Sure. I go to, I leave for Delmore on Wednesday, but I can do a show before then. Okay. I leave for Denver for the premier lacrosse league on Thursday. So how about, how about Wednesday morning? We could do that. We'll talk about it, but I, I jotted down a couple NFL plays that I thought were interesting. They're betting. I, I really like this play by the way. 
They're betting the Colts to make the playoffs at plus 155. I like the Colts. I like that coach. I, I, I think that play makes a lot of sense. They bet the Rams to make the playoffs at plus 115. No Aaron Donald. But keep that in mind. And then this one was really interesting to me. Ravens to not make the playoffs at plus 260. The thinking there has to be that division is so good. Could the Ravens be squeezed out? Hey, Baltimore was, in my opinion, last January, they were the best. Team. I don't want to talk about it. Just run the football. I'm so mad. I, Ariel brought this up the other day, and I'm like, I'm still mad. I'm Ravens. still very mad at the Ravens. To miss the playoffs plus 260. Great. Well, I hope they do. At Terriers fan on X says, what are the chances we get? Oh, I like this one. We get Kelly and Murray at West Virginia homecoming in October. I'm traveling down for the game, and we'll bring Vivas for Kelly and Jameson for John. It's kind of it's kind of racist to assume that I would want Jameson. I think I'm a, I'm a little offended by Terriers. Uh, is 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 West Virginia's homecoming game against Kansas State? Yeah. No way. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. I'm you know I'm. I thought go about with... going to Morgantown, but I'm not gonna. I mean, I every time I go there, I embarrass myself more than I did in Italy. So I guess if I go, I'm going with you. I'm gonna try to make a trip. So my brother Peter and his wife Chelsea, they're gonna be having a son. Towards Congratulations, the end of September. Uncle I know. John. I got a nephew coming in. I've already bought him a whole bunch of Liverpool stuff. But maybe I bet they can't do... wait for him to wear that. Oh, I'm sure they're very excited about it. But <laughs> but maybe we could go and meet the lad and then use it as Oh, excuse. you can just drive over because it's not far. <laughs> yeah, it's like three hours. And then go live, to Morgantown. Live show in uh in uh Morgantown. We'll see when this little guy comes. Okay. So let me let me read the last question. It's from. I'm supposed to be going to the KU game. Uh, I think the week after that. I don't. You're, know you're, you're Kelly. You're always on the road. That doesn't mean anything. I don't want to be. I'm already exhausted. You remember? The, so let me let me tell one Kelly story real quick. I got mad at Kelly. I asked her. Not really. I, I wasn't really mad. But I asked her to do a video for something. I forget. And you're like, well, I can't because so and so's in town. And I was like, Kelly. You're either traveling or you have somebody visiting you like 99% of the time. That can't prevent you from working. I'm going to read the last question. I just so yawned because that's how boring your uh, your story was. <laughs> it's for Kelly. It's from at John.Hollenrake on Instagram. Kelly, what is your best short Dave Koken story? Make it long if you want to. I don't mind. Make it long. I don't know if I have any good short stories. Dave, man, I have a lot of really good Dave stories. Um, you kind of put me on the spot there. I was telling this one, um, shout out to Dave's caretaker, Erin. I don't know if she's going to hear this, but she has been a godsend uh, this last year and a half. And I told her this story when she called to tell me that David passed away. And she's like, tell me something funny about Dave. And I just was, this is a terrible story. It's, it's no one else is going to find it funny, but Dave and I laughed and laughed and laughed. We were at the wager talk studio. We were in the green room. There were several people around. Um, and I couldn't tell you who, but we were just hanging out, waiting for our turn to go on video. And they were probably shooting commercials or something, but we were just sitting there BSing. And I open up Twitter and, uh, I'm like, Oh my God. And there was a rumor swirling that I was dating Dave and I was carrying his child. And all I can say is Dave, I look at Dave and he was like stitched over, like cracking up hysterical. And I go, is this a sign I need to hire a personal trainer? Like I need to get the people think I look pregnant. And Dave is like hysterically laughing. And like a couple of the guys must've came in and they're like, what is wrong with you two? And we are both in tears, full makeup on my face, like running down my tears, hysterically laughing at what losers are on the internet. And Dave always made me laugh every time we were together, every dinner, every lunch, every time we were at the studio, every time we were at the radio station, he always was absolutely hilarious with some of his uh, his dry humor or funny things. And that really didn't have anything to do with Dave. It was just a moment that I remember just being like so hysterical with him that we couldn't believe that this was a a, a rumor going around on the internet and uh, Aaron got a kick out of it. So that was the first one that came to mind. Uh, when I'm there, I hope to have some beers with some other people that were really close to Dave and Hopefully by then some funnier stories come to mind for me. You neither of us will be in town for this, but there is a celebration of life for Dave Koken at Oasis Bar on August 10th. Yes. Saturday, August 10th. 
Dave Kogan, a true Las Vegas original, sports betting original for sure. Yeah, Dave, uh, definitely uh, one of my mentors would not be here if it was not for him today. And so I hope you guys go. I know Matt Humans and a couple other guys set the party up at Oasis. So I appreciate them doing that. And uh, everybody go have a beer in Dave's honor for me. For sure, Kelly. Good to see you. I'm glad you survived Italy. I was a little nervous, especially when you FaceTime me drunk so many the times. The only time I was in danger for that 12-day stretch, I want you to know, was the 11 hours I was in New York City. Wow. Yeah, because I was hobbling down the street with one leg trying to get bagels for me and Ariel. And uh, let's just say there was a, a, a guy that was a little seedy following me around. I'm like, oh. And Ariel looked at me and she goes, I'm never a target until I'm with you. I'm like, great. I will quickly change the topic and say, oh, maybe we'll, we'll try to do a show early next week before I go to Del Mar. But for sure, we're going to do a show on Thursday, August 15th, in person at the Westgate Las Vegas Superbook. And then basically it's football season, right? I mean, the, the weekend season. after that is, is the unfortunately named week zero. And we're going to be doing a show once a week, probably on Wednesday. Is that okay. right? Sounds Every good Wednesday to me. starting on August. Wait, you know what? I can't do one on Wednesday, August 20th. <laughs> well, <laughs> you we'll guys, this is my, wait, I just want you guys to know this is my life. Every single time, this is my life. I Look, got a good John, I we got a good all dominate John Murray's schedule, and then he never can do the day I know, I that he good, suggests. I do want to do the show on Wednesdays. I can't do it on Wednesday, October, August. 21st, but we'll figure out a set time to hopefully give you guys some winners this season. Kelly was awful last football season, according to Kelly, right? It wasn't the best. I didn't hit any parlays, John Murray. You just kept stealing all my football winners for the NFL. What can stealing, I say? Stealing them. Okay. I had a pretty good year. Uh, we'll Bye, John back. Murray. We'll talk next week. You be good.